Welcome back to another tutorial and this time we're going to talk about disassembling and assembling your PC. So the question is, are you ready? Before we begin, allow yourself to ponder with these questions. The first one is, is it necessary to disassemble my computer? Am I sure I can get things right? Will I be able to put this thing back in their places again? So th these are the very important questions you need to ask yourself before doing it. Before doing it uh, on your own. Okay, so um, here are some things you need to consider before you begin to disassemble your computer. Number one is safety, two is tools, and Number three is notes. Safety, notes, safety tools, and notes. Safety, you should be able to prioritize that you that you're dealing with electricity, precious data, and expensive computer parts to handle. You should always put into mind that you're not uh, dealing with toys, but these are expensive and valuable uh, things that um, if you're going to ruin it so it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a very bad thing second one is the tools and this is very important that you have to have this before even starting with uh, considering to disassemble and assemble your computer it's you should have this Phillips screwdriver it looks like the, the point the tip of the Phillips screwdriver is a cross compared to the standard one which is the, just a line okay so the Phillips screwdriver is has the cross tip the tip is cross shape and notes okay this is very important especially if you're starting you're not yet that experienced in doing the disassembling and assembling so you have to take note of uh, what you are supposed to do before and after if you don't have uh, better yet okay aside from taking down notes better yet is get a picture of the before and after of what you're doing so that you will be you will be reminded or you will if, if, if you forget the placement of those those things inside the, the, the parts of the PC is you can just refer back to the pictures that you've taken that should be uh, very very helpful the picture should be very very helpful okay so those are the three things that you need to remember safety tools and the notes so um, all are now set for the procedure again think safety have the appropriate tools and have a notebook alongside to take important notes or better yet get pictures Okay. Next is we have to get started. And this is the step-by-step -step process in disassembling your PC. Number one is prepare all your tools. A long Phillips screwdriver, this one. A rubber eraser, don't have it here, but you can uh, produce it. Soft white bristle brush, this is for cleaning and if you'd be asking what's the eraser for uh, that that can help us in uh, cleaning the edge of uh, of like the um, the edges of uh, the random access memory module or the expansion cards okay the contacts there where it connects the part from the, the card or the the edge of that part like the RAM which con uh, comes into contact with the motherboard okay you have to clean it before uh, putting it back so you can use a rubber eraser to clean the dust or the hardened dust on the edges soft white brittle brush also is very helpful paper and pen for documentation and part organizer so if you don't have a part organizer you can just have a clean table or um, some some kind of, of uh, area where 
it's clean and then you put all the parts there so that it won't and it shouldn't be a glossy or as um should be something that the parts won't roll or the screws won't roll won't roll freely okay uh, second is before opening the system case be sure to turn off the system unit you have to turn it off okay shut it down turn it off and then unplug it from the power outlet okay turn off and unplug the avr from the wall socket as well after that Unplug all the cables connecting to the back of the system unit. And after clearing all the connected cables, put the system unit on an empty working table. So after removing all those wires at the back, like the cables of your mouse, of your keyboard, of the monitor, after removing all of those, put it on a clean desk or a working table. Next is touch the unpainted part of your system with your bare hands to remove the electrostatic discharge. That's the that's the metal part of the of your system unit, okay? So that uh, any uh, there's a possibility that you have electrostatic discharge stored on your body, and that could be very harmful to the electronic. Uh, parts of your computer like the processor the uh, random access memory modules if that electrostatic discharge from your body isn't um, uh, removed by touching the the metal parts of your computer okay the chassis okay chassis of your computer or any any metal metal so that the electrostatic discharge will flow off from your body so uh, be sure to do that before touching any of the electronic parts inside the system unit to be safe next is remove the screws of the side cover of the system case opposite to the side where the Input output ports are located. This these are the input output ports. This one. Okay. To avoid losing the screws, you had to remove. You can put those in the organizer, or if you don't have the organizer, as I have told you, you, you have to have a a clean area where you can put all of those screws and all of the other parts that you're going to remove off the PC or the system unit. Okay. Clear. Turn your system side down where the open side of the system unit should be facing upward where you can comfortably look down on the inside of your system case. As you can see, you can see every, all the parts here. And uh, that's the other side view. And uh, you have to always remember this also, the beginner's guide. If you're a beginner, be sure to document all the things. But you can you can use the notes or you can use those pictures. You can take pictures. Unplug all the power connectors and data cables connected to the motherboard. This will help you move freely while disassembling while disassembling takes place. Okay, it would really help if you have a wider area and a clean area. For you to be able to uh, put those parts in sequence. Next is remove the power supply by unscrewing the screws in a crisscross pattern. Uh, next is remove all the drives into their drive base. So these are the drive base. This one. Drive base. This will include optical drive, floppy disk drive, if necessary, and the hard drive. Next is we're done removing the optical drive. Since most of the system unit today doesn't have floppy disk drive, the next to be removed is the hard drive, this one. Okay, and um, now we have all we also have this the the SSD or uh, 
solid state drive. Okay, it's a faster. When it comes to speed, it's faster compared to the HDD or hard disk drive. Okay, so similarly, you have the same connections such as the power and the data cable. So it also uses SATA, which is this red thing. Okay, so uh, the SSD looks smaller than this, the HDD. Um, so next is uh, we remove the RAM, the video card, and the other card, perifer card peripheral components in their corresponding slots. So this is the RAM, okay? Random access memory module, and then the other parts, the video card, and so on and so forth. And then unscrew the motherboard onto the system case, lift up the motherboard, and put it on the side, on the safe place rather. So after removing it, put it in a safe place where nobody would be able to uh, uh, accidentally hit it okay, or um, put things on it because it might uh, break some parts. Disconnect the heat sink CPU fan cable from its connector on the motherboard. This one. This is the... Um, some some fans or and heat sinks have different types of locks, so be careful on how to remove that. You may oh, you may refer to the manual of this heat sink or, or the motherboard, okay? Or you can also uh, look for other literature that is related to that. Anyway, uh, you can also try also uh, by slowly pushing or pulling some of those parts but just be very careful of not forcing it sorry that's under construction okay so next is remove the cpu's fan and heat sink so this is the fan and under it is this this uh, silver colored thing is the heat sink this is responsible for absorbing the heat from the processor and then take note this step is quite tricky and you really need to do this carefully and you really need to, to have some guidance from elders or experienced ones because this is a very important part of your system unit and that is the processor okay once you're done removing the fan and the heat the heat sink the next is removing the cpu itself and its processor socket this is the, the one inside is the processor and this is the the holder and the lock so be very careful with it uh, other processors and locks are different from this ones so better refer to the manual of the motherboard just to be safe so depress the CPU socket retainer for this kind of uh, CPU is this how you do that we press the CPU socket retainer lever and this one is this is the socket lever retainer so you can you press it and then pull it some some uh, other mechanism is that you push and then pull it to the side and then turn it over it depends okay so for this type this is the step on how to do it um, second one is when you have released the lever from the retaining plate, lift the lever to its fully open, so upright position. This action releases the pressure on the hinge CPU socket retainer. The top of the CPU has some residual thermal compound. Uh, now, next is lift the unhinged side of the CPU socket retain retainer it's fully open upright position this action exposes the cpu and then the cpu is mounted on the pcb or printed circuit board the pcb that is keyed notched on two opposite sides okay so for that kind of cpu better yet if uh, you have the the manual it would really be very very wise to consult your manual before doing that 
Next is the last step in disassembling and that is to clean the chassis or the chassis with your brush. Also clean your motherboard and the rest of the peripherals being removed. You can use the razor. You can also use uh, the WD-40 Special Assist Contact Cleaner. Okay, it dries off quickly because it, um, it, it evaporates. Okay, it's not watery. Uh, after spraying it, it will clean off the surface and then it will evaporate right away. So there's no problem with, um, with liquid for that matter. Okay, you can also use brush or you can also use a... Um, you can also use the eraser to, to clean off the edges of those cards. Now the question, are the process in your disassembling player or not? If not, feel free to go back to the processes from the beginning to fully understand. We can just go back to the previous part by rewinding this video. If everything is clear, I assume you are now ready to learn the right process in assembling your PCs of putting them back all together again. So, in assembling your PC, just take note of the last out, first in policy. This would be our guide to properly assembling your PC. That's why when you... It's very important to take, to take notes so that you will be able to determine which one... Which was... Which, which parts came last or which parts came first. Because uh, that's our... Um, as beginners, this should be your uh, rule of thumb, and that is last out, first in. Prepare the workspace before opening the computer case. Attach the first. Attach first the following components into the motherboard. The CPU is secured uh, to its socket on the motherboard with locking assembly. Caution. When handling CPU, do not touch the CPU contacts. That's very. Those pins are very, very brittle. You might. It might hit a little bit of some of the edges, and it will just get. Um, uh, it will get folded, and then if you try to press it, it will even be worse. So your CPU would be damaged. Imagine uh, 9,000 pesos and above worth of computer part and just because just a pin was just one pin was folded because of uh, uh, carelessness and you need to buy another one that's very very that's very very um, it's really gonna hurt your your, your pocket uh, fan and heat sink and finally is the not, that's not finally actually that's the third part is you place back the RAM there that's how you return the uh, processor position the CPU over its socket so that the notches on the PC be aligned so there's a guide it won't get inside the the socket if it's if it's not properly placed on with its uh, right configuration but if you press forcefully press it and if it's not on the right place you're, you're going to damage the the pins and the processor processor itself so take a look at the guide uh, there's some kind of guide on your processor with the socket of the processor or the one that's attached to the motherboard so uh, there's a there's a guide there so be sure to follow that depends on one processor to another so carefully set the cpu onto the socket when correctly positioned the cpu lies flat in the socket and the notches on the cpu are aligned with the keys on the socket when the cpu is positioned in the socket lower the hinged socket retainer and lower the socket retainer lever process processing it downward and secure it under the lever retaining clip again as i've told you earlier that you have to consult your motherboard on how you install the processor because one type of 
motherboard and processor differs from the other. Okay, but if you have this similar type of processor, you can follow the the, the steps. Okay, these steps. Okay, so you press back again the lock. Putting back after the processor, you install the heat sink together with the fan uh, by using the locks. And uh, install now your motherboard onto the chassis. So when it's all you have connected everything, you can put back the, the motherboard together with the other parts as one. Make sure to screw them not too tight or else you're gonna break the motherboard. Uh, the motherboard, okay, where the screw is located. So possib possibly it could also damage the motherboard itself because uh, all the circuits are embedded onto that motherboard. So be very, very careful not to screw it too tight. Uh, insert your motherboard's I.O. shield. This this is the I.O. shield. When, it, when you tried to remove the motherboard, I'm sure that uh, this didn't come with it. Then place the motherboard onto your empty case. Make sure to screw them not too tight again and uh, we first install the drive or the hard drive remember last out first in uh, install on the internal and external drives in their base those are the optical drive the floppy drive we still have that uh, but uh, as for our computers now uh, floppy drives are obsolete now it's time for the optical drive to return to its proper place and install the power supply to its place put it back and after installing the power supply and the drives connect the connect properly all the power connectors and the data cables to the motherboard to distribute electricity to the different components there put back all those power cords and data cables as well turn them so it would really help if you were able to document and get pictures of those parts before disassembling it so that you can put, put them back together exactly as how it looked like on the pictures you took. Return the cover of the chassis watching out for internal wires and cables. Connect all the peripherals at the back of the unit also and also the power cord. Lastly, lastly turn on your computer to check if it's working properly. If it does not work, so check again your connections, especially the power connections. Uh, you might have uh, forgotten some of it, or it might not be uh, connected properly, so just reconnect it. And that's all, folks, for our disassembly and assembly of your personal computers thank you for your time have a nice day bye